with uh, Michael Cady uh, of SSI Racing, and viewers or, or Autoblog Green Ears will be familiar. We spoke to you not too long ago at the Alt Car Expo, but today we have a different car. Let's look at this one. You said that this year's a little, you're a little bit partial to this one. Well, not over my Daytona, no. but you know, this is a close second. Close second. This is a very, very classic looking car. Thank you. Got a, uh, Shelby 427. Yeah, it's an actual Shelby America 427 made uh, by HST Automotive. Yeah, all carbon fiber. We put a 300 kilowatt electric drivetrain system in, very similar to what we did with the Daytona. Um, we've got a front and rear battery pack to try and maintain the same rate ratio as the classic 427. It has a number of upgraded features, you know, upgraded brakes, independent rear suspension, high horsepower, rear ends, and uh, everything you'd want in a car that goes this fast. Mm -hmm. And how fast does this one go? Right now, it's set up to do some truly insane drag racing. Uh, we're running 370 gears, so it's going to only peak out about 110 miles an hour. But in the eighth mile, it's going to be untouchable. I mean, I can't even imagine. We're going to need like 14 to 18 inch slicks to be able to hook up that kind of power and torque. I like that. <laughs> and you, you, yeah, I saw you taking pictures recently. You said you need to document a little bit of what you've been doing for the last two months. Is right, yeah. My friends might want to know why it disappeared for the last two months. So I've been working on these two cars. Uh, and what, what were some of the, the things that you did with them? Right now they look incredibly clean, well polished here on the showroom floor. Right. But in the garage, what was the story? Well, I mean, you know, we had to design and build motor mounts. We had to... Uh, figure out placement of batteries, work with the battery company, all the parts companies to get the pieces in place, find a clean installation, work with the guys who are at the same time finishing the car, getting it polished, which is much harder to do than say working on a bare frame. Um, just making sure everything's hooked up, ready to go for the show. What were some of the, the big challenges that you, that you noticed when you were I mean, the biggest challenge is it's so small compared to everything else. I mean, there's enough room, but it's like, you know, you've got this polished paint job, so you got to make sure you've got no steel, lay down blankets, and then you're trying to reach in and get everything really clean, really nice, and, you know, really quickly. But, uh, you yeah. know, the challenges were mostly minor by comparison to the first one. Mm -hmm. Kind of knew everything we needed to do, put it together. We we're going to, before we s start selling the 10 we're going to make for next year, we're going to cryo treat all the moving parts, throw in a couple more racing tricks. You know, We have the race slash drive with high spec, <coughs> excuse me, high power driving mode switch that you can yeah, you know, stay on the street when you want to, and mm. just rip everyone a new one when you want to. So you said you just mentioned you're going to be selling ten of these next year. That is correct. We're going to do a are limited they all, edition. All sold out already? Or are you taking orders here at the show? We How does that work? It started. We had three pre-sold from the website when we made the announcement, and we've uh, got four more spoken for. So there's three left. Uh, we expect we're taking both of the cars to the San Diego Auto Show in December. By the end of that, we expect to all be sold. And what are people uh, willing to spend for, for these beauties? Um, we're going to be selling it for between 125 and 130,000. I don't know why we have that range. Yeah. But yeah, marketing is marketing. <laughs> um, and yeah, 10 is a number that I can guarantee production of. I've already pre-ordered all of the longest lead time parts, so the first one should be ready by Earth Day, and the last one will be ready before Christmas. Okay. Is, this, is it mostly you going to be doing the work, or you have a team of... I have a couple people that have been helping me throughout my Daytona and a little bit now, and we're going to just have to upgrade them from pizza to steak <laughs> for the first one, and after that I'll probably have to pay a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what can you tell us about the battery pack that's sitting out there under the hood? Okay, so we've got 13.8 kilowatt hours of K2 Energy's lithium iron phosphate batteries. We have divided 
Um, half of them are in the old gas tank and half of them are above the motor. Um, it's uh, set up to give us right at 300 kilowatts of short-term power. We've got a little bit more than that off the line probably for the eighth mile, but under the calculations for the extended life of the battery, we're just going to limit it to 300 kilowatts and never exceed its long-term recycle rate, except, of course, by customer specification. Uh, this is. We're also including a 20 amp charger as the base charger because everybody has a 20 amp circuit. If a customer wants a higher circuit, they're going to tell us that, and then we can count on them knowing what they're doing and not, you know, just popping their uh, breakers every time they plug in the car. Right. Um, when they, when they're not out trying to uh, tear everyone a new one. What kind of driving performance are they going to see if they take it out up in the mountains or in the desert or wherever it is they may? Um, you know, the range is going to be upwards of uh, 110 miles, depending on driving habits. And of course, happily, that's the same as the 427 gas version of the car. At 100 miles, you were done. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you drive quickly, like. When I race the eighth mile, I go through 1.3 kilowatt hours of power, so it would be good for 10 runs. Clearly, that's a lot less than 100 miles, so I can't, you know, argue that the range isn't absolutely horrendous. But it's the same thing with gas cars. Mm -hmm. Typically, they're burning like a gallon of gas in a single drag run. And uh, you talked when we spoke to you in October. You were talking about the reaction that you were getting from people on the race courses when you pulled up, you know, pulled away right. with your. Uh, oh, um, it's your Daytona and, and, you know, I'm guessing a car like this, um, you know, gets similar reaction. It's going to be the same thing, out. right? Yeah, it's going to be exactly the same. I mean, the only thing is, is that <coughs> with no top. You won't have to worry about fogging the window when it gets cold at the drag strip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is going to... Both of these cars have such a reputation that until people realize it's electric, they're going to expect that the car is going to tear them a new one. And the fact that it happens to be electric is just going to make it uh, more interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're definitely doing a good job of the evangelizing like you talked about yesterday. Now behind you, there's another car here in the booth. Yes. And we're going to be seeking with Joe or, or someone who's uh, um, going to give us a, a little bit of an introduction to, to this beauty like over here. Do you have time for me? Yes. Right. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll pause this one here real quick. I'll check it with you.